Hey guys, it's Charles Jager for Tuts Plus. Today I'm going to show you an introductory tutorial on using the Long Shadow preset that's available from Video Hive. This is an After Effects preset that you can purchase from Video Hive and it allows you to create long shadows on either text, titles, images, logos, or even with third party plugins like Element 3D. It's just a really cool effect and I use it a lot with my commercial work and I just wanted to create kind of an introductory tutorial showing what it's about, how you can use it, and a couple extra tips and tricks. If you don't own the Long Shadow preset, again, this is kind of a nice introduction to the actual preset. So let's go ahead and get started. After you purchase the preset, you'll need to install it into your After Effects presets folder. All right, so to install the presets where I'm at on my computer is under the Documents, Adobe, After Effects, CC 2017, and then you're gonna see User Presets, and in here you can create your own folders and drag and drop and add in new presets if you'd like. Now I've went ahead and downloaded the Long Shadow presets and it's two presets, one's for expression and one is a pseudo effect. I'm just gonna go ahead and shift click on both of these and I'm going to drag them into the user presets folder and that'll essentially install them. And now that we're inside of After Effects, we can come over to the effects and presets window and under animation presets, just toggle this open, you'll see user presets and then inside of there you can see the two Long Shadow presets that we just installed. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and demo how these work. What I've got here is just some basic text I've created here in After Effects. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna pre-compose this text. So I'm gonna select it, go up here to Layer and Pre-Compose, and move all attributes into a new composition. I'll just name this text. Now you technically don't have to do this when you use the effect. You can actually use the effect directly on the text. However, there's one feature that works only if you have it in a pre-composed composition like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I wanna make sure I move all attributes into the new composition and click OK. So now we can go ahead and drag and drop the long shadow preset onto our text. And again, there's two different versions. One's expressions and one is a pseudo effect. I like using the pseudo effect, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the expression version is. Both of them are essentially the same. I just drag and drop this on there. But as you can see, after we applied that, we have an entire list of different features here. And really this top half, we don't actually wanna mess with anything with just dash lines only. And that's kind of the background workings of the preset. But because this is the expression preset, you can see it's quite a bit more cumbersome to toggle down each one of these options and edit them. So I'm actually going to use the pseudo effect. I'll show you what that's all about. So I'm just gonna select all these while holding shift and delete those. And I'm gonna grab the pseudo effect. Now the only drawback to the pseudo effect is it will say something is missing when you apply it. So I'll go ahead and show you that now. I'm just gonna drag and drop this onto my text. And when we apply that, we get this After Effects warning saying two effects are missing. You can go ahead and ignore this. This is just one of the side effects of the pseudo effect. It's really just a cosmetic error and doesn't actually change anything to do with the effect. So just go ahead and click OK. And once again, we wanna come over here to the little triangle. I'm gonna close up all of these while they're all selected. And you can see this option at the very bottom, it says missing shadow two. Again, it's not missing, so don't worry about that. I'm just gonna to toggle that down. And now we have all these controls right here in a very confined area that makes it really easy to customize everything. Again, it's just a lot more user-friendly to me than the uh, expressions version, but use whichever one you like. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the actual functions of the long shadow. You can already see we have long shadow on our text. It looks very nice. And the first option, of course, is the color or we can come in here and customize this to be any color we want. You can see it updates in real time. It's quite fast, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this on kind of a cyan blue. The next two options are probably the ones you're gonna use the most, and that's the shadow angle and shadow length. So with the angle, I can just customize which direction the shadow is kind of going off to. I'll set it an angle kind of like this, and then the length, of course, is how long the actual shadow is and you can do this kind of long stylized look that's very popular nowadays. But what's great about this is you can also keyframe all of these options so we can actually keyframe the length from it being short and then expanding to being long. And so I might just do that really quickly here. So I'll just go to the very beginning, have it at zero, set a keyframe, and just come down here about 10 frames or so and have this come down. So now we see a quick ramp preview of that. If I wanted to, I can go ahead and select my layer. I'm gonna hit U on the keyboard to show those keyframes. I'm just gonna move this up just so we can see this a little easier. I'm gonna select both of those. And I'm gonna right click on them and come down to Keyframe Assistant. And I'm gonna select Easy Ease. And then I'll just kind of ease in and out those keyframes. Go ahead and ramp preview that really quickly. And so that just makes it a little more appealing as the long shadow comes down. And we're gonna tweak this a little bit more a little bit later. So another option we have is a shadow opacity. Of course, we could always adjust that if we needed to independently from the text. We also have expand edges and round edges, which is a new feature with long shadow version two. 
It essentially adds a nice outline border to our text. So we can come to the first expand edges and I'm just gonna crank this all the way up to 127. You'll see it's a very subtle outline that it adds to the text. But where we can really round this off is with the round edges. So now if we pull this up, we're gonna notice a much thicker outline appearing around the text. A little bit more appealing there. Now one thing to note, using the expand edges and the round edges, this will slow down the plugin a little bit. So you might see a little bit more lag when you're actually working with the effect when you have those dialed up, just because it's kind of calculating all this stuff around the edges to keep it smooth. Now another really cool feature is the attach to shadow feature. I'll just check this on, you'll see what happens. What happened here is the shadow actually, the, the end of the shadow actually moved up to where the text originally was. And if we go ahead and adjust the shadow angle, you'll see that it's actually gonna rotate around the position. So it's all being based off where the end of the shadow is. So I can actually increase the length here and you'll see it gets longer and shorter. And that would be something we could also keyframe the angle on. You could do all kinds of expressions with that. So we'll look at that again a little bit later. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off just now for the time being. Now the next option we have is the gradient effect. So I can go ahead and toggle this down. We can turn on the gradient. And now you can see we have a color gradient only on the shadow. And we have these two different colors. And we have these helpers here that kind of indicate to us where we want the gradient to start and end. And we can also set it to be a radial gradient if we would like. So you can see the red side here is kind of more of a radial or actually the blue is the radial here and we can expand this out from there if we would like. I'm gonna check it back off from radial and we can go ahead and tweak both of these colors if we would like. And you can also turn off the helpers there when you're finished using those. So that adds a nice appealing effect, giving it a little bit of a color variance. Next set of options we have is the feather mount. So we can go ahead and toggle that down and we can feather the position. And so that'll move it up only on the shadow and we can adjust the feather mount and we can go ahead and adjust the angle here with the rotation. So if I just wanted to be affecting the bottom, I'd rotate it something like this and adjust the position and the feather amount. So again, just another extra stylistic option you have if you want to use it. I'm typically not a big fan of the feathers. So I'm going to go ahead and set those back to zero. And finally, we have the shadow only option. You can check that on. Now you can see we only get the shadow. So if you want to apply any extra effects to this, like a distortion or something like that, you could do that and it wouldn't affect your text. And that's pretty much an overview of the long shadow preset with the different options there. Now let's take a look at using expressions combined with the preset to create some of the animations that I did at the very beginning of the tutorial. There's a couple different expressions we can use to get some really nice results. The first one I want to go ahead and use here is going to be the wiggle expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to the attach to shadow. I'm going to check that on. And now we have the shadow coming down here and it's actually because we have it attached to the shadow, the text is actually expanding upward. And I may have this not be quite as long, something kind of like this. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the shadow angle and you can see how this is gonna rotate the text. I'm gonna go ahead and alt click on the stopwatch there. And for the expression here, I'm just gonna type in wiggle. I'm gonna do open parentheses and I'm gonna say twice a second comma, I want this to rotate about 80 degrees and do in parentheses there and just click away. Now we can go ahead and ramp preview and see what this looks like. And so you can see we get some nice angle rotation here using the wiggle expression. And you could always keyframe this if you wanted to. I'm just using this expression just so it kind of creates an animation quickly. Now I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete that expression. Another expression we can use that works with this really well is in a bounce expression that was created by Dan Eberts of motionscript.com. I'll have the actual expression in the description for this tutorial and also have a link from motionscript.com if you wanna check out more about that. But essentially what this expression does is it gives us a nice organic bounce on everything. So I'm actually gonna come down here to the shadow length. I'm gonna uncheck that keyframe that we had. I'm gonna create a new one and I'm just gonna move down, you know, two, three, or four keyframes and I'm gonna set this to be 100. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off attached to shadow because I actually want this to expand from the back. And so it's kind of shooting back there. And I want this to kind of bounce in a very organic way. And what I've got here is a little notepad document that has the Danny Roots bounce expression on it. So I'm just gonna copy all of this. Again, this information here will be on the blog post. And so now I'm gonna come down here and I'm just going to alt click on the stopwatch for the shadow length. And I'm just gonna right click here and select paste to paste in that expression. And now that's in there. And what's great about this is we don't have to do any easy easing at all. It's gonna do all this itself with the expression. So now let's go ahead and ramp preview this. And you can see the long shadow expands out and does a nice kind of organic bounce effect there. And if we wanted to, we can always continue to tweak this so I can select this and I can adjust the shadow length and want it to be shorter or longer. 
I can adjust how quick it happens. I can even adjust the shadow angle if I want it to go a different direction. And I'll go ahead and ramp preview this now. And now you can see the results we're getting from that. We can also use this bounce expression with something like the shadow angle. So I'm just going to create a keyframe here for the shadow angle. And I'm just going to move down a little bit and rotate the angle. And I'm also going to alt click on the stopwatch there again. And I'm going to paste in that same expression. And so now we can go ahead and ramp preview and see what this looks like. So there you can see we get a nice double bounce effect happening with the long shadow. I think it would look a little bit nicer if I go ahead and turn on the attached to shadow for this example. Ram preview that really quickly. And there we go, that looks pretty cool. And what's great about this is this entire animation now is created only using the long shadow preset, four keyframes, and the Dan Ebert's bounce expressions. What's also great about having this in a pre-comp, we can just dive into the text pre-comp and I can go ahead and change this text. And I could go ahead and even change the font. And if we just jump back to our main comp, we'll see that that automatically updates. And we, now we have the long shadow animation on the new text, which is really cool. And again, if we have any client changes, if we were using this, let's say on a commercial, that just makes it really user friendly to get dive in there to a pre comp and change something. And it's really non-destructive on the entire animation. All right, guys, this has been Charles Jager for Tuts Plus. Hope you enjoyed this overview of using the long shadow preset. Thanks for watching.